There's a lot of pressure on kids. Study, achieve, win. But now there's a counter movement. Every kid's a winner. That sounds nice, but some people call that the wussification of America. The wussification of America. We are wimping down. We're wussifying American men, and it has to stop. What's wussy about kindness? Jen Ann Gledhill, who blogs about parenting, says what critics call wussification is just fine. If those are the qualifications of a wuss, then Jesus was probably the biggest wuss of our time. The term wussification in, in itself is pretty derogatory. Um, I think it's slightly homophobic. One town wants helmets on the soccer field. Youth soccer leagues may require helmets. So what? If anything ever happened to my kid on the soccer field, I could not live with myself. You call it wussification, I'm gonna go ahead and call it a spiritual awakening. A spiritual awakening. A move to protect our kids from dangers like what this motorcyclist does. He takes his hands off the handlebars of his Harley and lets his six-year-old steer. Now, I like risk-taking, but this makes me cringe. The boy doesn't even wear protective clothing. Hold him under the arms, up like this, and then slam! Other people object to what this father does. You think you got what it takes? You think you can take your old man? Comedian Gavin McGinnis posted this video he titled, How to Fight a Baby. 13 million people have watched this. Yeah, it's a hilarious video. It's not that funny. It's that it funny. It must have struck a chord. Yes, and when they see someone, you know, brazenly whipping their kid around, they go, that's what I do. Yeah. Studies have shown time and time again that children benefit from roughhousing. It, it's exercise, it's exhilarating, you're physically bonding with your child. And I can see with my own eyes as a parent, I see them benefit from this. And when you tell them to be scared and don't roughhouse and stand back and don't touch, you create an environment of fear. I don't find this funny. I don't think that fighting a baby is a laughing matter. Some experts were quick to call Gavin a bad parent. Shaken baby syndrome happens exactly like this. Gavin put his hands around the baby's neck. I don't find this funny. Just because something can arguably lead to something serious doesn't mean we have to avoid it. And in fact, living that kind of life where you say, children, avoid this, children, avoid that, you're teaching a child to be scared of the universe. In Regina Beach, Canada, a kid broke his leg playing in a tree. People demanded the trees be cut down. What's the matter with a broken leg? It's only six weeks. Pretty girls sign your cast. Here's his own son with his arm in a cast. His big sister pushed him off the slide. My heart swells with pride if my son has a cast on. But they're little kids. We want to protect them. That's true of babies. When they start to become little people, you have to teach them about the real world because if you don't do it, reality's going to do it. But now in America, we even protect older kids from disappointment by giving every child a trophy. I'm proud of it. Real proud of it. When I was a kid, trophies had meaning. You only got one of these things if you were good at something. But these days, kids get trophies for participating. In my kid's soccer league, everybody got a trophy. I'm sorry. And they, they seem <laughs> happy. Parenting author Ashley Merriman argues that giving everyone a prize is bad for kids. I'm told it's good to praise kids, make them feel good about themselves. The research has actually found the opposite, that when kids are told they're wonderful, they are worried that the next time they try something, they'll screw up. 40 years ago, the trendy idea in child raising was self-esteem. California started a self-esteem task force, here mocked by a cartoonist. The first agenda, make sure everyone on the committee feels good about themselves. The self-esteem movement was influential. <laughs> Parents were told, avoid competition. Competition's bad. But now the research is in. Boosting self-esteem may be counterproductive. It does not improve academic performance. Kids with low self-esteem who get this overinflated praise, overinflated encouragement, become more reticent to try things in the future. They avoid challenges instead of go in front of them. She says that's why trophies for all is a bad idea. I've heard of kids who got so upset at soccer award ceremonies about getting participation trophies, they dumped them into the trash can and set them on fire. Because they knew participation trophies are bunk? they were insulted. He knows that trophy was pity, and it's embarrassing to him. What about the self-esteem of the kid who isn't as good? You're not as good. Sorry. That hurts. Yeah. 
I'm not as good? You're not as good. You're not as handsome as Brad Pitt. You're not as intelligent as that dude who can do pi to 3,000 decimal places. Sorry, there is a hierarchy of meritocracy in the world, and the best thing you can do is accept that and move on. Parents tell me, well, my kid worked really hard. They went to practice every week. I say, they didn't go to practice every week. You drove them, right? Of course, makers of trophies want more kids to get trophies. I used to joke that there was a trophy industrial complex, and then I found out it's a $3 billion a year industry. The trophy industrial complex? That's, yeah, that's what I call it. And that's what it is. They have lobbyists like the Awards and Recognition Association that say things like, We really need to start encouraging parents to buy trophies every time their kid reads a book. If you give a trophy to everybody, the trophy doesn't mean anything. We don't know what the trophy means to the child. Janan still holds on to a trophy she got when she was a kid. You don't know what this means to me. What does this mean to you? It just meant I showed up and I finished something and I, I, I accomplished something and, and, um, and it said I was funny, John. Strike three, you're out of there! Sounds like this movie where Billy Crystal can't believe the way his grandkids are being protected. Time! It's okay. This is my dad and he's new here. There are no outs in this game. No outs? How do you even know who's winning? In this league, we don't keep score. Every game ends in a tie. Sure enough, many kids' sports leagues now ban keeping score. Turns out the kids keep score secretly anyway? Oh, I don't even think it's a secret. By four or five, they know exactly who is the best reader in the class, who's the best athlete, who's the best drawing. They know about differences in ability, and it's confusing to them when we pretend that there aren't any. Hey, look, 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 look at mine, see? Oh, Dad, we don't really worry about lines. Billy Crystal tells his grandson, color between the lines. You know, what's the point of having lines if you're just gonna... Artie. Oh. That's, that's beautiful. That's absolutely beautiful. It's very avant-garde. Picasso. Exactly. I don't see why kids must color within the lines, but what does calling them Picasso do to kids? <gasps> I've peaked. A kid popped the best picture ever. Studies show American kids do have high self-esteem. They rank number one in self-esteem for math, but they rank 27th in performance. American kids think they're doing so well when they're doing badly. How about you acknowledge what they did do well? What about the kid who is bad? What about the one who actually really gave it a, a good shot and wasn't good? And they know it. You don't give them a trophy. You can give them a ribbon. Maybe the person who deserves the ribbon the least needs it the most. We're talking about kids, you know? There's nothing better for a kid than to learn how to lose. That's what childhood is all about, making mistakes, learning to lose, learning to fail.